by applying the distributive property again, now, rather than having one term being multiplied by a binomial, I now have an expression, a binomial multiplied by a binomial. However, the, the rules of distributive property still come out. You still multiply 5 times both these terms. You still multiply 4x times both these terms. However, sometimes, though, writing it looking like that, it can sometimes be confusing. So another way that we like to look at it, does anybody remember what I'm trying to get into? Yes? FOIL. Yes, FOIL. Very good. So what FOIL represents is basically multiplying the first terms in each expression, um, the outer terms in each expression, the inner terms in each expression, and then the last terms in each expression. And it's just a way that we use in mathematics to better organize the information. However, as you guys can see, it's really the same thing. It's just a little bit, looks a little bit nicer than looking at the distributive property, right? And sometimes we would call it a nice little foil face, right? Kind of looks like a little guy or girl there, maybe, kind of. Okay. Um, my other way of um, doing this, which is my preferred way of understanding, is if you guys look at this, do you guys remember what is the area of a rectangle, Victoria? Do you remember? Area of a rectangle? Area equals? Thank you, Victoria. Your voice has changed. So area <laughs> equals length times width. Okay? Um, yeah, so that works. So, so basically, what I want you to understand is when you're multiplying two expressions or terms, you're basically providing an area. So what I want you guys to think about, and this becomes very helpful, is what I call this is the box method. And basically what we are simply doing is rewriting this to multiply. You can basically think of these sides as side lengths of a rectangle. And when we multiply them, you're basically finding the area of the box. And I just like doing this for two reasons. One, it gives me a visual, visual representation of area, which is going to be helpful later in this un later next unit. And then two, it just organizes everything better. There's nothing wrong with doing these two. You should be, hopefully you guys are familiar with these two. I just like the box method. It just keeps everything organized. And it's also easy, length times width. 3x times 4x is going to give us 12x squared. 3x times 5, you can only multiply the numbers, is going to give you a positive. 15x. 4x times 1 gives you a positive 4x. And 5 times 1 gives you a positive 5. And what's nice also about this is you, as long as you have your terms in descending order, it keeps your like terms written out or in the, um, keeps them on the diagonal. So my final answer in this case would be 12x squared plus 19x plus 5. If you guys were to multiply this out, it would give you the same answer. 12x squared plus 4x plus 15x plus 5. And then what you'd have to do is combine your like terms to get that exact same answer. Did you guys see that? You could have done, you, if you would have done either way, you would have arrived at the same answer. The only thing I like, I just like the visual representation of my like terms. Hey, they're on the diagonal. Combine them. And again, I will be using this in unit two or in unit three. So it might be helpful. Um, even if you don't like using it, if you can do it in your head, that's probably